Hi guys, so today we are just making some cold mung bean noodles and boy do I need it because it has been like 95 in London for the past five days. It has never happened in history before, so yay, we did it. Um, but that, uh, that creates the perfect setting for these cold mung bean noodles. You can just prepare them ahead of time, keep them in the refrigerator. You don't have to cook at all. Uh, I topped it with that meat sauce that I showed you guys how to make last week. It is so delicious, so flavorful, and you, it's cold, <laughs> which is very, very useful. So I hope you guys all enjoy. So mung bean noodles are super easy to make, uh, short of finding that mung bean starch, uh, which I have showed you in an earlier episode how to make, so I'll put the link down below. But uh, if you can find it, that would be really good. And usually the ratio is about one part uh, mung bean starch to seven parts water, uh, volumetri volumetrically? volume wise. <laughs> uh, so that's a half a cup of mung bean starch and then with three and a half cups of water I'm adding it to. And the method to doing this is to just kind of take about a cup of water and uh, dissolve that mung bean starch first so that there are no lumps. And then right as the water starts to boil, it's not it's not boiling yet, just, just bubbles, um, you add it in. I don't, I don't exactly know why. I feel like maybe you could probably do the whole thing and mix everything at once and then bring it up to a boil. Uh, but, but anyways, slowly bring it up to a boil. So this is about medium heat. Uh, you don't want to burn anything. You want to make sure that the starch has enough time to cook. So once it comes up to a boil, be careful because these bubbles, they are fierce. Um... Uh, you just want to cook it for about a minute just to make sure that everything is cooked and then turn it off right away and you're just going to pour it into a vessel of your choice. So like I said before, have something, uh, a vessel to take in that mixture immediately because it has a tendency to set and once it cools down, it kind of gets lumpy. So you want to put it in, this can go into the fridge three to four hours and it should firm up and, and, and cool. And some of you are asking, why are you putting it in a round Bowl. And that's because a lot of the times um, on street food places, I will see it in round bowls. Um, and I, and I, I kind of understand why because of what we're about to do with it. But personally, I think it will serve you a lot better uh, if you put it in into a rectangular bowl. So the way to get this to not stick is to just use water. Um, every time if, if something is, is sticking to it, just add a little bit more water and that should unstick it. And this, this definitely looks like one of those raindrop cakes, which is a complete sham for anybody who has ever made it before because it's essentially just like, it's like, oh, jello that we called uh, cake. So this guy, this, uh, this metallic visor, uh, so cool. It, it is basically a little bit like a bigger grater and you'll see these in China, um, especially with this um, mung bean noodle. And I think the reason that it is circular is so that they can do like this one swooping circular motion that I, I clearly can't do uh, right now. But you can understand why it might be useful to have it in a rectangular shape. Uh, in cutting this.
I bring you guys the best ASMR. You're welcome. Um, if any of you are interested in that cutter, I'll try to find a link to it and I'll put it down below because I, I, I know a lot of you guys are like me and you like gadgets. So these noodles you can treat as any other noodle that you want. Uh, I'm going to top it off with this amazing meat sauce that goes well with everything. Again, uh, recipe link down below. Um, and then e usually with these cold mung bean noodles on the streets, they will serve it with like peanuts, um, maybe some tahini as well as some chanking vinegar, a little bit of soy sauce. Um, and y'all can do all of that as well. I'm just gonna pair my meat sauce with a little bit of um, celery and then some parsley along with some chanking vinegar because I like kind of that sourness. It really brightens up the whole dish. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this recipe. It is so refreshing and so necessary for hot summer days. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this one. As usual, if you want to see more recipes like this, remember to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you guys all again next time. Bye.